He lifted his muzzle and bade a single aching note. It had been so long since he'd seen his boy. Before this, they'd never been apart for more than half a day. Often, Peter would leave him in the morning, and Pax would pace in his pen in increasing distress until the afternoon, when Peter would come home, smelling of other young humans and of the strange breath of the large yellow bus that delivered him. With the afternoon, Pax could reassure himself that his boy was all right, examining him for any sign of injury before he could relax into play. It was afternoon now. He bayed again, and this time Gray lifted his voice in an echo of loss. But when Pax trotted back to the path to resume his the journey, Gray faltered. Pax could see that he needed rest. He led the wounded fox to a mossy circle of shade beneath a pine. Gray laid his cheek on his paw, and before Pax had even finished cleaning his wound again, he was asleep. As Pax kept watch, he thought of doing favorite things with his boy when he found him. Tumbling together outside, playing hunting games, exploring the grass yard and the bit of woods behind it. He remembered the ways his boy would reward him, the full smiles of greeting, the thoughts, the thorough neck scratching, Peter's fingers digging in just hard enough. He recalled the piece of lying at his boy's feet in the front of the fire. These thoughts calmed Pax, and he dozed with the memory of Peter's knuckles kneading the loose skin between his shoulder blades so real that his fur ruffled under it, until a shifting breeze brought a scent that called him to instant alert. Meat. Roasted meat. The kind his humans sometimes cooked over a fire in the yard. His boy would feed him bites of this meat, dripping with fat. For days afterwards, Pax would scour the ashy fire beds for overlooked scraps. Even the charred, bo charred bones were treasures. Pax got to his paws to sniff more deeply. Yes, roasted meat. He knows the sleeping Gray. Humans are near. Gray moved more easily after his rest, and the two foxes kept up a loping pace. As they got closer, though, Pax charged ahead. His body was light, and the fat burned off from days of scarce food. He ran as foxes were meant to run, compact body airing through the air at swiftness that rippled his fur. The new joy of the... New joy of speed, the urgency of coming night, the hope of reunion with his boy. These things transformed him into something that shot like liquid fire between the trees. Something gravity couldn't touch. Pax could have run forever. Until he galloped out from the woods and saw ahead of him a wide river. Beyond that stretched a clear field, flat and then rising up to massive crumbling stone walls. It was dust now, and at the far corner of the stone ruins, a dozen men were gathered around a fire eating. Beyond them were a cluster of tents and several large vehicles. The wind had shifted to the east. The grilled meat smoke still hung heavy in the air, but Pax could only get a general scent of the humans. He bound up and down the river's edge, frustrated, but from no direction could he differentiate one human scent from another. At least Pax knew his boy was not here. None of the humans had his reedy form, None moved the same quick energy. None held himself as Peter had, upright. But with a downward cant of his head, he was relieved. The other sets of the encampment, smoke, diesel, scorched metal, and a strange dark electrical odor, were things he would have heeded, herded Pat, Peter away from. Gray limped from the woods and flopped to the riverbank beside Pax. Together, these two foxes watched the men. They had finished eating, but they remained around a fire, talking and laughing. They are war sick? Pax wanted to know. Not now. They are peaceful now. I remember this peace. The old fox curled his forelegs under his chest, and at the end of the day, the humans I lived with would gather like these, this, like those across the river. Suddenly, Pax remembered. He had seen something similar as well. It hadn't happened for several years but sometimes at the end of the day, his humans would sit together on his boy's nest. The father would lay a hard box, flat and thin and made of many layers of paper, across his lap. Paper, like Pax's own bedding, but not shredded and with many marks. The humans would peel these layers one by one and study them. Pax remembered that his humans were most linked together on those evenings, and when their harmony, he could let down his guard. 
Pax felt a strange sensation, as if his chest were no longer large enough for his heart. The foxes turned back to the men. Some were still crouched around the fire, while others moved with lanterns between the equipment and the tents. With full darkness, the remaining men rose from the fireside. They dumped out mugs of coffee, scuffed dirt over flames, and ducked into tents. Gray rose, also, and limped uphill to the protection of the sweeping hemlock bough. He circled and curled himself up on the pine needle ground underneath, his nose tucked under his bush. Rush. The smell of the meat had made Pax too hungry to rest. He trotted to the edge of the river. Its current was soft. He dipped his head and drank, and then jumped to a rock, slippery with moss but stable. Then, gaze fixed on the glow of the dying embers, he chose. A leap, a splash, and again his body did whatever it had done before, but was meant to but what it had never done before, but was meant to do all along. He swam. A moment later he climbed the bank and shook himself off. Neither movement nor sound came from the tents. Pax crept silently across the field and climbed the rise. He circled to the bounds of the camp, edging closer and closer to the fire bed. The sense of danger was strong. It was hard not to flee. He was, after all, accustomed only to his two humans, the one he loved, the one he tolerated. Several times he crept to, a very, crept to the very rim of the fire bed, found the smell of meat laced with the warning scent of the war-sick men, then leapt back. A discarded pork bone, still redolent with fat, proved too much to resist. Pax darted in. As he gulped the meat, ash gritted but still warm, the rustle of canvas startled him. He froze. A man emerged from a tent, silhouetted by a lantern light. He stretched, and a long shadow snaked out to cloak the watching fox. The man turned away and relieved himself on a bush. The scent of his urine traveled to Pax, and he bristled to sharp alert. His boy's father.